Hey everyone, it's Neil here from Post to Post. Thanks for joining me today. I thought I'd bring you just a bit of a retro episode, uh, a video that 99% of you guys probably have never seen before. Now, I started on YouTube in early 2017, January 1st, 2017. Since that point, I've created over 2,000 videos between the original channel and then this new Post to Post Productions channel. And the video that you're about to see in this video, for, or for the majority of this video, was episode number 17, the 17th video that I ever produced, and now we're over 2,000. So why am I doing this? Well, the Montreal Canadiens have made the finals, which is a rare feat, <laughs> first time in 28 years. So I thought that this would be an extremely appropriate video to post for everyone who hasn't seen it, because it involves the GOAT, my dad, and you guys have been requesting uh, him to be on the channel more and more and more, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the first video that he ever was in on Post to Post. Like this was his debut basically. I'm almost certain of that. Uh, I didn't actually technically check, but I'm, I'm quite sure. But it is, it's an odd video because he talks about why he's a Montreal Canadiens fan. Growing up, he shows footage from when uh, when he went to the Stanley Cup parade in 1993. He took footage on his, you know, his, his VHS camera. That's in the video. I think you guys are gonna find that pretty cool. But why is he a Canadiens fan? What got him into uh, liking the Canadians or loving the Canadians and how he feels about the future. Now, this was filmed in 2017 and he's referencing guys like De La Rose and Andrew Ghetto and Markov and we know what's going to happen with the Canadians and it's just, it is funny to kind of hear him talk about some of those things, but a lot of what he says is kind of applicable as well. So the time is right to kind of re revisit this video and, and republish it and I'm going to cut out most of the parts with myself because it is cringe. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. It is very cringy. I am a little like I'm just talking like this, like I'm scared and I don't know what I'm doing. And that's, uh, it's real bad, but excuse, excuse me in the video, but the video is about, uh, it's about the goat. It's about the, about my dad. And, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. So have fun. Can you tell me your short answer as to why you are a Montreal Canadiens fan? Um, reason number one, I was born six and a half miles from Centre Ice at the Montreal Forum uh, in the west end of Montreal in a, in a suburb called Lachine. I grew up in Montreal and I lived there until I was 15 years old. And my dad, uh, before me, was a Montreal Canadiens fan and gave me a lot of exposure to the team. So it's my home team. Uh, I'm a Montreal boy and uh, they're, my, they're my boys. Yeah, Dad uh, was in the uh, food service industry uh, when he moved to Montreal in 1956. Uh, I came along a couple of years after that. But Dad's business in the 60s and early 70s was servicing restaurants and concessions. And many of his customers were in the Montreal Forum. So he was in, the, in and out of the Forum a lot, delivering product, fixing machines, because mostly he was in the coffee business. And he got to know the restaurant owners, the concessionaires there, uh, some of the security people, I suppose. And he would end up with free tickets from time to time. Uh, and he would take me to some games. Uh, I was really young for some of them, and I don't remember them, but uh, for some of the others, I do have a couple of vivid recalls. But yeah, he was surrounded by, by hockey as well. Also, my parents had friends uh, in their social circles that were connected in some way with the team. One of their friends was a gentleman by the name of Bert Mosdell, whose brother Ken played for the Canadians in the 40s and 50s and won four cups with Montreal. Um, and we had other you know, acquaintances that weren't too far from, from the team itself. And Montreal Canadians uh, ambiance was all around us where we lived as well. So yeah, lived close to a few. Um, in the 1970s, early 70s, Larry Robinson and Claude LaRose uh, lived not too far away. And one of my acquaintances at school shoveled their driveways. <laughs> so uh, I never saw them around or anything, but they were nearby. So act, we had active players in the neighborhood. We had a lot of retired players around as well. Uh, Phil Goyette, who would be a name many Montreal fans my age and older might remember. He lived just down the street uh, from where I lived. And Yvonne Cornoyer, uh, his junior career had some Lachine orbit to it as well. He played in the uh, same rink a little bit that I played in when I played my little bit of minor hockey uh, when I was in grade five. So um, it's all around you. Um, I think probably every neighborhood around Montreal has players somewhere nearby and, and has some personal connection they can make with the team. I don't know how many I would have been at with Dad. Um, probably at least a half a dozen, you know, as a kid. Mm -hmm. There are a couple that stand out quite vividly because I was older at the time. 
I remember one game in particular he took me to, which was the Oakland Seals game, uh, be early 1969, I think January. We ended up winning the game, we, the Montreal Canadiens ended up winning the game 8-4. to four. And I just remember that game more so for, well, the, the, the goal total that the team racked up was, was impressive. Uh, I also remember from that game the uniforms that Oakland was wearing were just the, the worst things I'd ever seen in my <laughs> life. And, uh, and they were, this was just post, you know, original six expansion. We're talking a year or two into the new, the new world of, uh, of more teams. And nobody from the West Division, you know, the St. Louis Blues, I think, were habitually right. the first opponent at the, in the Stanley Cup Finals for the first few years, and they were just slaughtered each time. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, the Oakland Seals never got anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember that game vividly, I think, for that reason, just the gaudy uniforms, and I would be like, you know, just uh, eight years old or nine years old at yeah. the time. But it wasn't my first time at the Forum. I knew that. Like, I'd been there before, so I don't remember how many games prior to that. Okay. I remember another game, Montreal and Boston. It was the last game of the regular season. I was a little disappointed because uh, both teams were resting their better players because the playoffs were coming up and the game didn't mean anything. Right. The standings weren't going to change. So uh, I didn't see, you know, the Bellavos and, and all that uh, that I wanted to see. And right. Bobby Orr was playing that game. Uh, but there were obviously still some, mm. some players. And it was a game that Montreal also won. I had a good record going to Montreal games even when I started taking you yeah you know it was quite a while before we saw a loss Jean Beliveau was um, a gentleman and a really good player and a, and a supreme leader uh, and every kid you know we we're playing road hockey in Montreal you know in the spring especially when the snow would go everybody wanted to be Beliveau and yeah you know, you know Beliveau would pass to Beliveau <laughs> it was uh, he was just a, he was a god yeah and he was uh, number four number four and you were born on December 4th yeah, as it turned out, yeah. And uh, uh, coincidentally, that is the also the same birthday of, of the Montreal Canadiens. The Montreal Canadiens were created uh, on December the 4th, 1909. I didn't know until the 100th anniversary was approaching in 2009 right? Uh, the, of what date they were born on. And then it started to come out in the news as to what day the actual 100th anniversary was. Mm -hmm. And it was my 50th birthday. <laughs> Uh, so I was born on the 50th birthday of the Montreal Canadiens, and they celebrated their centennial on my 50th birthday. And I didn't know any of that for all the time I was you know, growing up and becoming a right. super fan. I think I have two that really stand out. Um, the 1971 Stanley Cup win over Chicago, very improbable to, for Montreal to even make it that far. And Montreal was down in Game 7, 2-0, and came back and, and scored three goals uh, and won the Game 3-2 in Game 7. And I remember that game. Uh, it's important because I was, it was a, a first Stanley Cup uh, win in our new house that we had bought in the uh, West End of Lachine. Dad and I were watching the game together. I have very vivid recall of, of watching that final game and how thrilling it was and how happy we were that they'd come back and won Game 7 and won yet another Stanley Cup. Yeah. Back then, Stanley Cups were coming pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I can't believe it's been so long now since we won one. But I did some math just getting ready for this chat with you, Neil. Yeah. And, uh, you know, by the time I was 26 years old, Montreal had won 11 Stanley Cups in my lifetime. And uh, by the time you were 26 years old, they'd only won two in your mm. lifetime. And so you and I have vastly different experiences with uh, Unfortunately. Montreal. And in my second greatest memory of Montreal winning was 93. After the 71 win, right. I think 93 win was the next best one. Um, and for reasons that we've discussed already, uh, you were on the couch that night. You wanted to stay up. It was game five. I certainly wanted you to stay up. Mm. Uh, you fell asleep. Uh, maybe if I'd been a better dad, it would have, <laughs> you know, kept poking at you to make yeah. keep you awake. But you probably wouldn't have appreciated that. And of course, at that time, I thought, well, you know, you'll see them next year. It's not a big deal. But yeah. It turns out to be a very big deal now. But the neat part about the '93 win, even though we weren't living in Montreal, and I hadn't lived in Montreal at that point for almost 20 years, um, I was on my way to Montreal the next day already to go to the Grand Prix Formula One race with my brother. And I had a big old VHS video camera that I was going to take anyhow, just to document the trip. And to see our old neighborhood, we were going to do a bit of a grand tour of uh, the suburbs. Uh, anyway, we ended up there in Montreal. That We landed there, uh, drove, uh, but we arrived late in the evening of the first day after they'd won the cup. And the glass, the broken glass, was still on St. Catherine Street. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, the, the town was very, very much a big buzz. Mm -hmm. And within a day or two after that, there was the Stanley Cup parade. And we made sure we attended that. So I stood on the street corner 
basically at the intersection of Sherbrooke Street and Cotonez, where the parade was going to end. And when they got to Cotonez, the parade was going to drive up that street and then just disperse. Mm -hmm. So we got to see uh, that final turn. I, I positioned myself between two parked cars. And as the police went by and started sweeping all the people away from the head of the parade, they had nowhere to go except past me. So when everything went past, there I was between these two parked cars, and all the floats went by right in front of me. Got them all on camera. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. awesome. So I got you know Patrick Waugh with the Conn Smythe Trophy and uh, uh, Guy Car or yeah Guy Carboneau. Uh, on my video, he's just putting the Stanley Cup back down after uh, having held it up, and then he comes over though, but he's waving and uh, mm. and you know you can recognize you know you can see Jacques Perrier who at the time was with the team. Uh, he was in a suit, but he was wearing a Habs hat, and he wasn't a player by then, but mm. he was a, a legacy player for yeah. Montreal, a great guy. And uh, yeah, to be there for that was just, you know, beyond, beyond words. I was so excited. Bought this hat uh, that we had, uh, we had a, a, an amazing day after the win when all this product started coming out, you know, and uh, this hat says uh, 1993 Stanley Cup champions, Montreal Canadiens. Uh, bought the hat. It's the hat that a lot of the team was wearing in the parade uh, when you see the video. And I was going into the gift shop to get this hat and a few other things and out Coming, coming out the door when I was going in was Gary Lehman, who was at that time a member of the team who had just won the Stanley Cup himself. And he was in the gift shop buying stuff, probably for family and friends. But he was coming out just as we were going in. And I recognized him because he had this uh, big uh, scrape on his chin that probably happened during one of the games. Hmm. And he was a tall guy, and I recognized him right away anyway. But yeah. you know, it was definitely was Gary Lehman. He was <laughs> on his way out when we were going in. And no one else seemed to be aware of who he was, uh -huh. in my recollection anyway. Yeah, so I got this uh, hat. Also got a, a T-shirt. I still have it, although it doesn't fit anymore for some reason. It must have shrunk a lot. <laughs> but uh, it says, it, it's a, the T-shirt is a white T-shirt, and the, the whole length of the T-shirt is the front page of the Montreal Gazette uh, the next day. Mm. And the headline was, Cup Comes Home. You know, and uh, at that time, that's where the Stanley Cup was home, was in Montreal. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And now it's homeless. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, to, just to change the mood, what's your worst memory of the Montreal Canadiens? Like I know in 89, they came pretty close with Calgary and that yeah. must have been tough to watch. It was tough to watch because at that time I still hated Toronto and I hated <laughs> everyone, not only who played for Toronto, but who used to play for Toronto. And I hated Lanny McDonald for no good reason. <laughs> and Lanny McDonald was like the superstar of that game. Right. You know, that game when, and they, they won the game, I think in Montreal. So they had to watch Calgary walk the cup around, uh, yeah. you know, in their in 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 the forum, and that was just devastating. There was another devastating time uh, earlier on. This would be probably in the uh, late '70s. Montreal, I think, had a series with the Minnesota North Stars, which eventually became the Dallas Stars, if I'm not mistaken. And they they lost that series, and they shouldn't have. And I was just because that was a year I really thought they were going to do something. Um, whatever year it was, you know. It, I don't, I don't exactly recall. Right. Uh, and, uh, well, the, the, the overtime loss to Boston a couple of years ago, Game 7. Uh, right, yeah. In the playoffs. I was just devastated. Because I really, and I think any fan of hockey, when their team starts to go a little bit deep, you know, they start to get past the first round and you start to believe something might happen. Yeah. And when it doesn't happen, it, it guts you. Mm. It just guts you. So, yeah. And, you know, I've been through... Uh, a, a few of those. I'm almost happier. We've had this discussion in the past. I'm almost happier when Montreal, uh, if they're not going to win the cup, I'd rather they not even get in the playoffs. Yeah, same. Don't give yeah. me false hope. Don't don't distract me from just enjoying <laughs> hockey. Yeah, right? exactly. Because if my heart is in the thing, then I know I'm either I'm almost certainly dedicated or uh, destined for heartbreak. Yeah, and I don't want that. How do you feel about the team? And uh, like you said, like we just said, they were they're pretty inconsistent. But how do you feel about? the team, and uh, we were talking about the reputation of a lot of Montreal Canadiens, current Montreal Canadiens fans. Uh, how do you feel about the team, the fans, and the future of the Canadiens? When do you think that uh, they'll bring the Cup home to Montreal next? I'm an optimist, not a pessimist. I think that if Montreal wins the Stanley Cup in the next couple of years, it'll probably be another one of those unlikely runs where you know they'll finish midpoint in the standings. They're not going to be the favorite. They'll pull off some games they shouldn't win, probably. People you've never heard of will step up and become stars for that run in the playoffs. And uh, they could go all the way. They have all the 
all the ingredients. I think you know almost every team, if you put the right people in place, yeah. have all the ingredients at a given point in time. Uh, you know they've got Carey Price. If their other people come back and get healthy, you know Galchenyuk and Markov, um, who knows what they could do? I'm, I I would not put any. Well, I'd never bet on my team anyway. I just mm. don't think that's right. But, yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't put a lot of faith in in a cup this year, but I wouldn't have in '93 and I wouldn't have in '86 either. That's true. Uh, these are different times, so you just don't know. The playoffs are a whole new season. Yeah. When the playoffs begin, the regular season then just looks like farm t- farm team stuff. Uh, you know, it looks like preseason didn't really matter stuff. Once you're in and you're locked in, uh, you never know. And and to be in a city when the playoffs are going on, um, it's it, it's intense. And it's especially intense in Montreal because mm. the second part of your question was about the fans. You know, in one of your earlier uh, vlogs, you talked about um, how, you know, you didn't want to be considered as one of those typical, you know, Montreal fans that everyone hates. And I totally identify with that mm-hmm. uh, comment because as much as I love Montreal, I watch them hopefully from an objective detachment situation, you know, and I don't go crazy. Um, I'm not... Uh, you know, I, I'm not the first one to judge them. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and mm-hmm. just let things slide. I do love when another team makes a really, really good play. And I think a lot of Montreal fans are really like that. You know, every every fan base has its idiots. Mm-hmm. Montreal probably has more than most. Yeah. But I think still the majority of Montreal fans. I remember the first game that uh, Toronto played in Montreal this season. And Austin Matthews did. I guess it was only an exhibition game, if I'm not mistaken. It was just like preseason. Uh, but Austin Matthews did some crazy great play. And, and the fans in Montreal were like, you know, mm, yeah. wow, that, that was really good. <laughs> and I think, you know, it must be hard for the, for the officials when they're officiating a game in Montreal because you've got 21,400 referees in the stands yeah. that are watching every single thing you do yeah. or not do. And it must be hard for officials. It must be hard for other teams to come in and, and to go into this cathedral yeah. You know, it's really, this is this, the, the center of hockey in the, on the planet Earth, yeah. in my view. And uh, Montreal fans are, they, there's probably not a fan anywhere, or a group of fans anywhere on the planet that knows more about hockey than the Montreal Canadiens fans. Yeah. Now, that can be a bad thing, too. Montreal fans can turn on you in a heartbeat, yeah. you know. The team can be up 6-1 in a game, and it's late in the third, and they get a power play, and they stink on the power play, yeah. and the fans start booing, yeah. you know. Like... There's, uh, it's not, it's not all the fans, obviously. Yeah. It, but it's crazy. Yeah, it <laughs> like, is. Just relax. Yeah. Please. <laughs> you know, not that long ago, Montreal, I think, got the fifth draft pick because they had finished so poorly in the standings. And the previous year, I think they had come first in the standings. Yeah. And, uh, that's what it's like. It's a roller coaster ride. I'm encouraged by the fact that we have Mark Bergevin, who's running the team. Mm-hmm. He's the guy who built the Chicago Blackhawks. And if you look at even the 100 best players ever in the NHL, Duncan Keith, Jonathan Taves, and Patrick Kane skate out. These are all people that Bergevin would have engineered the arriving in Chicago at the time. And there they are, and they're still anchoring that team and will for a long time to come. Yeah. If he can pull off the same core uh, excellence of players in Montreal that he did with Chicago, you know, that's really what I think Montreal fans want. I don't think they want another 86 or another 93 where they puck lucked it out mm. and fluked it. Uh, they want a dynasty to come back. You know, they are deep because they have so many players out that your fourth line types are playing second line time. Mm. And there's more players coming in, you know, and, and they just need the rough edges sanded off. And they're, you know, Andrew Ghetto and De La Rose and people like that. They could be the next phase or the next mm. wave. Yeah. And if you wait long enough, even a player that seems to be a slow learner like Alexi Emelin, you know, he becomes, you know, a key component of yeah. the defense. And, you know... I don't know how much time we have to wait for these players to all develop. And we, on the other end of the game, you've got Markov, who, you know, has a very limited time span left. You know, mm, he's, he's 38 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So. And, you know, for a defenseman, uh, if you're smart and you don't move a lot and you still know where to pass the puck, you're still valuable for a while. But there comes a point when everyone has to hang him up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I dread that day when it comes along. But we don't have what we had when I was a kid, you know, in yeah. the 70s. You don't have the big three. Uh, like we'd want to have, yeah. but uh, yeah. So you're right. It's going to be probably a little more emotional roller coaster before things uh, stay on a steady trajectory. 